Usually on social media and also on YouTube, people tend to showcase the highlights of what they're doing. But as we all know in reality, to get to those goals and outcomes, it takes a lot of sacrifice. It takes a lot of work behind the scenes. And sometimes you have to go through hell to even get to those points. Case in point for me with this house. Um, I'm now in it. I finally moved into this new place. I almost finished the construction on this house, but it's been an absolute nightmare in this process. It's been the hardest journey by far of my entire life. The biggest sacrifice I've ever had to make. So before I kind of go into like, oh, hey, check out my new house. Look how pretty and shiny it is. I kind of wanted to illuminate on just that journey I was talking about and how difficult this really was to get to even where I am today. I mean, the house isn't completely done yet, but it's a lot closer now, finally. And yeah, it's, um, it's, been, it's, been, it's been an absolute nightmare. Um, even though I'm finally now moved in and living in it, I can't even smell the roses because I've just been constantly getting stabbed in the face by thorns. rewind the clock a little bit i embarked on this journey for the construction process and design process and all that stuff about three years ago obviously the whole prep work to get to that even took much longer than that uh it took many many years obviously um pretty much a life mission uh this is my dream house this is a dream this is the biggest dream honestly that i've had so far and sometimes i wonder again is the cost of this dream too much is it too expensive because i, I still don't know when i can actually start enjoying things and actually you know even though i'm living in it i'm not i don't feel like i'm present i just feel like i have to focus on the next task i need to finish to get this house across the line and that's all i've been really slaving away at and that's putting things lightly i mean i've been working for the past four months 14 hours every single day and night doing something planning something because this whole process has just been like you know one step forward, two steps back. There's always a problem. Every single thing that could go wrong probably went wrong. And I don't know what the deal is with that. I mean, usually I know building a house is hard, but damn, I feel like I really got some bad luck with this or something because it was hard. Like everything went wrong. Of course, when we finished the plumbing, now it was finally done. Of course, the plumbing and all the all the um, shower pans, shower drains and everything flooded. I mean, I, I mean, duh, that would happen. I mean, like, why wouldn't that happen? Uh, we had to completely remove all the faucets on the walls because they're slightly off center because we have wall mounted faucets here and then this was crooked this wasn't aligned with the sink and this was a little bit too low so all this marble that you see behind here was installed we had to completely break it take it apart and redo everything that you see here i mean this had to be completely redone and then this thing still wasn't centered so we had to come back and do it again and then the marble that you saw against the the faucet that broke three times that broke three times when we were trying to get it delivered. So, I mean, that gives you a glimpse of just how ridiculous this house was. And again, before I even talk about what I've been doing recently with the house, going back to the starting line of when I started the design and construction process three years ago, that's when the first real sacrifices had to be made. I sold a condo that I was living in. It was a nice little condo, had everything done. It was just, you know, nice and ready to go. Got rid of it, moved into my parents' spare bedroom, and I'm an old man, so I had to really suck up some pride to do that. But again, this was a completely all in, all resources type of you know investment, I guess, into this house. Completely single minded for the past three years. Uh, I've been living like a monk. I've been living like an absolute hermit. Is it a hermit? Yeah, I guess a hermit, like whatever. You know what I'm talking about. Like some, I was, I was a bum. I was a complete bum, all right? I mean, the only thing I spent money on was basically food because I'm a fat person deep down inside and I just went to the gym and that was that was all I did. No no cars, no hobbies, nothing really fun. I had to really I didn't buy any clothes really, nothing. Nothing. I just completely lived like an absolute bum for 3 years living in my parents' spare bedroom. Uh again, I've been very reclusive for the past few years just to kind of focus on this. But that's not really even where things really kind of came to a head. Um the project itself was delayed significantly i mean i started this during covid so that obviously threw things way out of whack but it was still extremely delayed for a lot of reasons it was also extremely over budget 
by like orders of magnitudes over budget. Typically when you build a new construction house, people say rule of thumb, you know, budget about 20% over whatever you got quoted. Fine. That wasn't even close for this. I'm not going to say exactly what the number is because I want to not think about it right now, honestly, before I throw up. Anyway, what I'm saying is like finally two and a half years later after construction broke ground, I put everything into a U-Haul truck and made the move because I thought it was finally time. I mean, two and a half years later, I moved all my furniture that I've been collecting for the past five years. So after doing all that and safeguarding all this stuff that I finally had ready to go for this big vision, this, this, this completely planned out vision and thinking the house will be at a 99% mark and I can kind of put myself in, stage it and start living in it while we finish up the last remaining 1%. That was not, that was not even, not even close. It was, it was probably more at like a 90% completion mark. I mean, there was so much more that had to be done. I came into an absolute construction war zone. Like there was an inch of dust around all the floors. It was, it was, uh, it was really bad. I mean, the, the walls had holes in them. Nothing was painted. So then here I was with no way of turning back home now because literally I moved my whole life up here in one go. I just had to put all my furniture in random spots around the house to kind of protect it and allow construction to continue. So yeah, I was completely stuck. I had no way of doing anything else. I had to just basically hover around the house and be a, a uh, stranger to my own house. You know, like that was, I slept on the floor of my closet for like two months because the house wasn't, wasn't ready at all. That gives me an idea of how crappy that situation was. So yeah, and of course the house took another four months after I moved in to get to where I am today. And yeah, now it's at the 99% mark. But that whole process was just an absolute nightmare. I was homeless in my own new house. I can go into details on and on and on, but I don't wanna make this like a 10 hour video. And again, I'm so stressed out by it that I can't even enjoy it. So it makes me wonder, was the cost of this dream worth it? And to this day, I still don't know. And really the topic of this video is, you know, I've been, I've been suppressing myself and holding myself back from things I really wanted to do. And, you know, I haven't been living like a normal person at all. So I want to get back into doing things maybe that, that will give me enjoyment instead of pain and suffering. So I basically said, F it, I'm not going to be a prisoner to this anymore. And, you know, I did finally get to the point where this thing got the certificate of occupancy. So I could actually get my, you know, financing and mortgage for the house which I was not able to get because I never got a loan on this thing when I started because I also didn't think COVID would hit this hard on the prices. And I also didn't think this house would be this much over budget in general for all the fancy stuff that, and just other reasons. Um, so that was really tough. I was basically out of money and I couldn't finish the house because I couldn't get funding for it until we could finish the house. I was in this weird bind situation. And then finally, like probably two and a half months after I came here, we did the final inspection process. And of course, of course, I mean, there was like 30 things on the list that didn't get done that we needed to finish in that process. So it was like two weeks of scrambling like, a, like crazy to get those done. And then, you know what, the cherry on top is not to get too personal, but obviously all that stuff was happening during this time. Um, but I was in a relationship for two years, got dumped, you know, so that was great. I think this house contributed to a lot of it, not all of it, but a good amount of it. Just when things were getting really tough and we're finally on the final stretch of things. So yeah, things, uh, things haven't been very sweet to say the least. Um, I still think, even though I'm not really enjoying things, I still think it was worth it. No, I wouldn't say worth it. I, I still think it was the right, I don't even know how to word this. I think... It, what I'm trying to say is if I was to do this house, I think I still would have needed to do it the way I did it and push forward and just get it done. Yeah, you have to be all in on a project like this. And if you're going to do it, you got to go for it. Otherwise, you may not be able to do it or it may take forever or you may have to like come back to it many, many years later. And who knows how things are different with the economy and things like that later on. So, um, yeah. So... Basically, if I was gonna do it, I had to do it, and I did it. So that's kind of what I'm trying to say. It is what it is. Um, again, gotta take one step at a time, keep moving forward, all that good stuff. So let me stop talking about the house. Let me just go ahead and talk about uh, the new project, I guess. So hopefully I can get back to my life. 
and living how I usually live. And yeah, this thing is gonna be quite the project. So let me just uh, save my breath here and save your time and show you what it is. And here's Blue, the boy. So yeah, this is uh, this is the new the new project right here. I mean, it doesn't even have doors on it, so it's definitely gonna be a project. But I was very specific in terms of wanting this model. This is a 2009 M1165A1 Rev. And the Rev models in particular came with a lot of upgrades from the military slash government via AM General. I mean, for example, the frame is a lot bigger. These are 12K rated frames with 12K half shafts. Um, it's got a gear driven fan, it's got differential coolers, it's got AC front and rear, it's got a lot of different things. It's got a turbo nose, this nose is also different. So if you're going to kind of like have a civilian nice Hummer, doing a Humvee is really dumb. I mean, again, this thing doesn't even have doors, it has no interior, it's just like basically a shell that you get. Um, it's completely military, obviously. So to do all this and to convert all of this into the creature comforts and just a trim that you get from a Hummer H1, yeah, it's gonna be a lot of work. Uh, that's something I have to do piece by piece, but that is the goal. If you want a car that you can just, or a truck that you can just go and it's ready to go, Hummer H1 all day. And I agree to that. But the reason why I still ended up going with this much more difficult direction, I think, for having this Humvee is because I wanted all the rev stuff and I just like the look of this specific model and the body shape. I think this is the best, or at least this is my favorite um, body shape of a Hummer H1 slash Humvee in general. And what I'm talking about is back here. So this is a truck model and then it has a different curtain in the back as you can see here, specific to the M1165 A1. And this is the vent for one of the uh, AC condensers. Um, but yeah, I mean, to get all this, you can't get this in a Hummer H1 civilian model. You can't get the bigger frame. You can't get this truck style. I mean, you can try and like bolt it on, but that doesn't seem to be the best course either. I mean, it's definitely going to be way more work than the other direction. It's also probably going to cost more than if I just bought an H1. And then just on that note, in about half an hour, the guy I've been working with for the past two months to kind of line up this project and to do kind of the first phase of it. He's coming over here right now with his truck and trailer to pick this thing up and take it back to his shop to start that work. So when he shows up, I'll do another video with him to kind of showcase exactly what this build is gonna be like and what we have in store for this project. So stay tuned. I think it's gonna be pretty interesting. Uh, we're doing something very different that I'm very excited to talk about. You'll see in that second video, um, the parts for that interesting thing is already at his shop and we got everything ready to go. And yeah, I think uh, if I can get this thing across the finish line, it's gonna be pretty sick. And then obviously I'll also do a final video for the, for the house, uh, hopefully in a much more optimistic and better light than what I kind of talked about today. Actually, you know what, before I conclude this, I should probably start this thing because I also have to move it to the center um, for Nick who's coming in half an hour. So here's the quick startup procedure for a Humvee. Five list to run, wait, and then... Five hours later. All right, let's hop inside. So being that this is a military vehicle, there is no ignition key just basically go in and start it. So I have this dumb steering wheel lock on it. Doesn't really do much, but you know, whatever. All right, parking brake, transfer case, shifter. There's the steering wheel. These are the gauges. Some of these don't work. You need to figure that out. Um, fan controls, AC. That was a deep boarding kit that someone hacked up. Thank you, appreciate that, nice work. For some reason, this thing also came with speakers. So the thing that you never know about these uh, military Humvees is what kind of life they lived during their time in the military. Some of them were actually deployed and put into war. Uh, other ones, maybe like this one, was just used around the base because it doesn't actually have any other uh, holes for it. Because again, it has these up armor ready holes, but the ones that actually had armor put on, you would have a lot more holes drilled here or bigger hinges to actually put the armor doors on. That leads me to think, plus these speakers, 
uh, to kind of maybe assume that this thing was just used around the base. Who knows? Also, only has about 8,000 miles on it, 8,700 actually. Um, but anyway, let's move this thing forward. Let's see, do the wipers work? Oh yeah. 